Dirtenog from Grand Gamers Guild, a game where you're playing Irish storytellers going and grabbing the tales and telling them to accomplish certain scoring goals. What do I think about it? I'll tell you after I show you how to play it. I have this pseudo set up for a two-player game. Obviously, normally the graded cards would be in the middle, and you have your opponent sitting next, across from you, or next to you, however you want to lay out your table. The difference when you have more players is the grill, grid is bigger. In a three-player game, this is filled in, and you have another row, and then you add more rows as you add more players. The turns are simple at the beginning. Each person is going to take one of their storytellers. I'm going to be playing purple for this example. And they're going to put it between two cards. So we'll say they go there. I'll put mine there. They'll go here. Let me put mine up here. And they'll put theirs right there. And let's go ahead and go there. There we go. So that is simple. After everyone's placed it out, you now go in reverse order. So seeing as I play second, I will pick a card first. I should also say normally you do have five cards in hand. One, two, three, four, five that you're going to be able to choose from. You're going to take a card and then place it in one of your three sagas down here. Let's go ahead and grab this card. You take it, you bring your person back, you then play that card or one from your hands. I'm going to play this one. We're going to go, we'll go right up there. There we go. They would then take a card. So let's say they just take this one. They'll put that in their area. My turn. So I then look at mine and we'll go ahead and take this one. And let's go ahead and lay down. We'll go here. And this one says, when played, change the color of all cards next to Puka Dolman to yellow. So you'd grab a yellow disc, you'd throw it on here, and that is now yellow. They would take another card, and then I would go, we're going to grab the brewery. And then they'd grab their last one as I'm putting mine down. And this is change the color of the brewery to the card next to it. So then again, you would just play a card down. I'm just going to randomly throw a card down. And that is it. Then you're going to discard a card from your hand. You're going to discard any cards left there. You're going to reset up. You're going to play over five rounds. And then you're going to score for a few different things. Before I get into scoring, I just want to get into a couple of different things. So you'll notice this card has an ongoing ability. You add one to it for each other card in your saga that is six or higher. So if I put this down right now, I would grab a number four disc. You'd look through all your wooden discs and you'll find a four. There we go. And we'll put a four. Say on a future turn, I put this seven down. This four now switches to a five. It just keeps changing as you're putting out cards. Whereas when you played this card with the yellow, it's when played. So that's only when it actually goes out. One other ability is there are certain cards that let you swap or move. If you swap or move a card, you do not trigger its one played ability. So if in a later turn I move this down here, these cards would stay blue and not turn yellow because I did not play it, I just simply moved it. Alright, so now when you go into final scoring, you're going to first score your different rows. In this instance, the Wanderings want you to have each card that has no other co card of that value in its row or column. So right now you'll see this is the only five. There's technically no fives here. So this would score five points because it's based on its value. This wants cards that are, score each card here that is lower than the card to its left. So right now this five is lower than the six, so I'd be getting five points for that card. This one sets to the same value, so right now I wouldn't be getting any points there. After you score your levels, you're going to grab this Regions of Ternanog and set to player count 1 to 3, 4 to 5, and you're going to be counting up your largest region, which is orthogonally connected colors. You want the largest group, the largest region gets 8, the second largest gets 3, and you need to have at least 2 cards. 
So I probably would have left up here. I'd have a region of two yellow at that point. High score wins. All right, so that is how you play Terra Nanog. If you're interested in seeing what's inside of the box, you can look up above and you will see a link to the what's in the box and what does it all do, along with, uh, if you look below, a solo play. All right, so let's get into my two cents. All right, we'll start off with components. This game has some fantastic components. All of the wood bits are big, chunky, thick. You'll see that in that, one, in that unboxing. The cards are super colorful. They're laid out well. You can understand them easily. The numbers are there. The colors are there. The colors each have a symbol, so you can differentiate that way as well. They have double-sided value tokens, so you can kind of move, maneuver those around as you need to, and that kind of lessens the amount of components you need as well because you're not having to come up with those value tokens for all of that. The experience at two players. So the big difference in this game with a two player is the size grid that you lay out. You basically have a three by three grid without the center card. So for us, it's okay because you don't go through as many cards. As I said, I did a solo play and you went through more cards solo than you do in the two player game. So in a game where you need certain cards for those scoring conditions, you kind of want to be able to go through more of the deck and see more cards. So that is one little issue we have with the experience at two players. Which kind of brings us down into our negatives. So that is one of the negatives that you can't really get those cards. So you do feel like you are stuck more at that luck of the draw. Which can be aggravating when you're trying to score these cards just right. And then your opponent seems to always be getting them. And then you just see that they're just going to whoop you. So that is one of the negatives. The other is that I said about those double-sided tokens. One of the problems that we have with it is trying to find the exact value you wanted, trying to flip them over and so forth. That seemed kind of taking longer than we would have liked and kind of broke up the flow. And then for those of you who are worried about this, does seem to be kind of a table hog, especially at more players, because you have the 3x3 three three grid in the middle, and then each person is going to have a 3x5 grid in front of them. And then you have all the tokens, so if you have multiple player, each person is going to have this big grid. So just be aware it does need some table space with it. That's a negative only if that stuff concerns you. For us, it wasn't too bad. We have a decent sized table, so we didn't have an issue with that. Just something I wanted to bring up in case you're wondering. But other than that, that's really only our, our only negatives with it. We did enjoy it. Let's get on to theme. This did a very good job immersing in the theme using the wording. I believe they had a cultural consultant to make sure everything they're doing was accurate. All of the scoring cards have a story on the back that relates to what it is. They use, they don't just go, all right, you have a lost storyteller, here's what you do. You, they actually say, you know, they're on an extra quest and this is what happens. And, and so they do a really good job of taking that theme and just jamming it in for better for lack of a better word, they make, they're make they making sure that you do experience it, which we always do enjoy when it's a theme that's really cool and not done a lot, and be able to experience it full force in a game is pretty nifty. That brings us to the end with smoothness. So this game does play really smooth. It's super simple. You place out a worker, everyone goes around, placing out the three workers in reverse turn order, you take your worker and a card back into your hand. You play a card down. Very simple rule set. So it it's easy to understand. It's easy to follow the flow. We never had an issue. Like this is one that I can easily just throw on the table and teach to anyone without really having to go back to the rule book because everything feels very intuitive. The way it's supposed to be just plays out well. So overall, we are going to I'm going to rate this for rings. You'll see right here. Um, just for those, a couple little negatives of those number tokens, the luck of the draw kind of could make certain games not enjoy as enjoyable as the others. But still, a four rings out of five is what I give this game of Terranog. So again, feel free to check out that unboxing or the solo play. Also, feel free to like, subscribe, comment, share, or ring the bell for this video. 
We also would appreciate if you could look at our Patreon. Consider subscribing. Any money that we get from there will help us continue to put out the content that hopefully you are enjoying from us. So until next time, let me tell you a story. <laughs>